boop, boop, bobbing along. Our home is moving. After two weeks living in the marina, we finally set off. Um, slowly heading towards London to begin with, and our aim for the first day was to make it to Crick. Stu's just dropped his two week old sunglasses in the water. Not sure how lucky we're gonna get trying to fish him out from the murky depths. <laughs> A lovely man with lovely dogs has stopped and let us borrow his magnet. Got him. Yeah. Yay. He's got them. We definitely need a magnet. the night just in front of Crick Tunnel. So we made it to Crick, as hoped. Yay! Um, yeah, it was we pretty found good. Spot. It was, we didn't have too many catastrophes apart just, from my just sunglasses. Just the sun was sting, but then a really kind person let us use their magnet. Yeah. And we have not lost Stu's brand new sunglasses, prescription sunglasses. Um, so now we're just going to eat. Uh, we're probably going to watch um umbrella academy with friends remotely <laughs> yeah. uh, later and have a quiet night and hope that the storm rain storm because the heat wave is finally broken hope that it's not too bad tomorrow and that we'll be able to cruise good morning good. a very quick good morning on good tuesday because <laughs> um it's going to start raining and storming in the afternoon so yes. we need to get going we've got Crick Tunnel to go through and Watford Locks, hopefully. Oh, uh, definitely. Before, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there, but before that, we've got to go quickly empty a toilet. So this is our first time doing an Elson that's not in a marina. <laughs> this this weird because this feels like we're walking into somebody's home. We won't be. Yeah. Oh, we forgot the rubbish. Oh, there's Never mind. barely anything in there. Good, that beacon isn't flashing. Sorry? It says when beacon is flashing, do not use Elson. So it does. What's it like? Crick tunnel, here we come. So, oh, I'll just go back through the boat um, and see Stu, and it's completely dark inside the boat. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where the light switches are in the dark. I've made it to the back. I remembered there's a torch on my phone. We're through the tunnel, and it's raining, but hopefully the storm still won't start till the afternoon. So 
we need to go book in with the lock keeper. And it's your turn to do scary stuff. It is scary stuff. I don't know how to find them or anything. It was not scary stuff. It was fine. Red before white, and you'll be all right. So naturally, I did a crap job. Emmy's doing a great job. All I've got to do is go forwards out of a lock into the next lock. Ideally, without scraping the boat or the locks. Can I? Nah. Bye, Watford Locks. <laughs> and thank you, volunteers. We're at our third Buckby lock, I think. Um, and it was the wrong way round for us, so we decided to wait and see if anyone came the other way and I went to boil the kettle and make pot poodles that as soon as I put the kettle on someone did come the other way um, so Stu is now helping with the lock while I um, while I waited with the kettle which is now boiled Woo! Buckby locks are done! I completely uh, um, didn't realise that was going to be seven locks I have a very badly timed half made set of pot noodles to finish making. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about those. <laughs> right, should we push on and we can eat those while we. Uh, shall we put what on? Should we push on? Yes, yeah. Screw them. <laughs> okay. Have you had any pot noodle yet? How is it? Is it okay? Yeah. I love that there are signs. I think this must be for voters, so we know there's shops and tea rooms over there. We're not stopping though. Got water and crisps. Finished our Bombay bad boys. On we go. Tuesday, finished our second day of cruising and moored up just as it started. Oh, there's a duck! Don't know if, don't know if I've got it. Um, yeah, so we managed, it started raining just as we moored up. Like, we were cruising for maybe seven to eight hours. Um, yeah, really happy with that. We're in Weedon, Weedon Beck, I think that's the name of it. I'm hoping to go to Stoke Brewing tomorrow. But yeah, we did. We had Crook Tunnel um, and Watford Locks, which was like lots of volunteers on that one. Um, they were really lovely and they were encouraging me to learn to drive. Um, and I know I must because it's a lot to put on to do. Uh, but I just get so anxious. Um, I'm very, I, I can't drive a car. I mean, I have a driving license, but I'm too anxious to drive a car. I haven't been able to for a few years now. Mm. So uh, yeah, I should, I should do the helmsman training like Stu did. Um, yeah, and then we had Buckby locks, which um, I just didn't realise there was going to be seven locks. Uh, uh, but then just met loads of lovely people on the way down the other locks. So many lovely, like, people on hol in holiday hires and then also other boaters who were really welcoming and lovely and full of advice. Um, and we ended up going down, it was, the locks were, it was like just working out really well, like people were coming up and then me and us, us and the our holiday boat were going down together and we, we got through it all <laughs> together.
it's pouring with rain and we have a drippy window. Yeah. Well, we knew we were going to have some stuff to sort out. Hey, uh, we're just about to start our third day of cruising. Yeah, so we're going to push on. We haven't got, we've got a lot of cruising to do today. I think we're going to probably stop a bit shy of going down the locks if we can avoid it at Stoke Bruin, so that we're in Stoke Bruin proper because we're meeting my uncle tonight. And uh, yeah, should be a good day. So just checking the engine and. We had a bit of water coming in around the stern gland and the grease pump, but that all looks good. But noticing we've got quite a bit of water on this side running, well, there. Not a huge amount, and there is some rusty patch there, which sort of suggests that there's been some water ingress there for a while. So I'm just wondering how long that's been. for a little stop to empty the toilets and fill up the water. Oops. Stu was um, emptying the cassette and dropped the lid to the cassette on the Elson point. So now we're down to one cassette. <laughs> I mean, it's already kind of funny. <laughs> feel very annoyed with myself. Maybe more hands made me feel much better. Two boats in there. So one of the boats coming out told us there was another boat behind and we stopped to wait, but there was no sign of the boat and we weren't sure what to do for a bit. Decision made? Yeah, I guess. I think we're just gonna, yeah, it's a two-way tunnel. There could be five boats in there for all we know, so. The volunteers at um, Waterford Lock yesterday were saying this tunnel is haunted. It's, I think, one of the longest tunnels. It's a very long tunnel anyway, and it's looking ominous. And already we've been told there's a boat in there that has not appeared. <laughs> Probably the ghost's got a nearly there. The ghosts did not get them. <laughs> mooring spot. Oh, we had an absolutely lovely evening at the pub with Uncle Stephen and Debbie. It was so good to see them. Um, and, and they gave us boat warming gifts and came back to see the boat. Mm. Um, really lovely. Yeah. Um, hopefully you'll see them again this weekend. Morning view. There's a boat in front of us that's gone. 
Um, this is a steak pro in. And I thought I would move us down because where we were was a little bit of a pinch point. But to be honest, I think the place where the boat in front of us was is also a bit of a pinch point. But at least it's not quite so much of a blind pinch point. So I thought I would just walk the boat down a bit. We had a very eventful day yesterday. Well, not very eventful. We had a just longer day than we intended to have. Um, and uh, than I intended to have. <laughs> I think we, we thought it would be about four hours cruising and it ended up being... I don't know, six or seven. But we met up with my uncle and his partner, and that was absolutely lovely uh, in the evening. Um, we decided for today, since we've only got about a day's travel to get us to Cosgrove, uh, in theory, um, we decided today that we'd... Uh, just stay in Stoke Bruin. Maybe Emmy's got a little work to do this morning. And then we thought we might go and have an explore of Stoke Bruin. Um, yeah. I'm going to put my phone down now because I need to actually finish uh, moving the boat. So we've stopped overnight in Stoke Bruin and it's sun's back out and we're going to have a little explore. And a preview of the facilities. We'll be doing this tomorrow. This is the bottom of the locks at Stoke Bruin. This is an old, smaller lock uh, that was here before they built the bigger lock. So what have we done today, Em? What do you mean? What have we done? we're supposed to be in those trees over there. It's too hot for this. Yeah. We might go back to the boat. Because what time is it today? Ten to five. Ten to five? That's a reasonable time to go home. our members um, we've just broken down at Stoke Bruin
Hello. I don't know what time it is actually. It's about quarter past eleven. Um, yeah, we set off like Friday. Monday, didn't we? Yeah. On Friday, we were setting off. Um, the plan was to go from Stoke Bruin down the locks to Cosgrove, um, which was going to be where we were going to put stay for a little bit um, for access to a train station, so get to work. But was it just inside the first lock? Just inside the first lock, we were just pulling away. And the engine didn't sound quite right anyway, and oh, then it did started... Did it not? What did it sound like? Well, it sounded noisy. Mm. Um, and then it splutters out of existence, and then tried to turn it on a few times, and it kept turning on for about three seconds, and then sputtering out. Uh, so we had to pull it in down another lock, so we could get to the mooring the long pound at Stoke Bruin where you can moor for up to seven days. Um, tried turning it over again because some time had gone past and it sputtered out of existence again. Uh, and then, yeah, we had to pull it past somebody else's boat, but fortunately... Mm. We... There was a nice volunteer as well at the lock yeah, who was helping was us. Uh, but yeah, we had to pull pull the boat through the lock. Yeah. no engine and then around um a um, boat yeah. um, who kindly let us stand on the gunnels to pull pull any yeah. round and now we're moored up uh thankfully we are rcr members with a canal rescue so that's already being put to use and an engineer should be with us um about 40 minutes about 40 minutes so fingers crossed it's uh nothing big just a little something that we just don't understand to fix very very easily <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, I mean, it's nothing like I checked the oil and the coolant seemed mm. all right. I think if it's anything, like I checked the hoses that they put on and they all seem nice and tight. It it might be a fuel line problem because that's what could a lot of... Could it be the battery? Could be the battery. It could be, I mean, it could be the battery. It could be the throttle. Um, it could be a problem with the throttle. Well... Let's see what happens and fingers crossed it's something uh, small and fixable yeah, we could be on our way so. today. I might as well get on with some work. the bite to eat well we were going to set off and put it in reverse to pull ourselves out from the uh, bank actually reverse was fine when we put it into forwards it then cut out again so I don't know if that's got something to do with it because it's always cut out and going forwards but that doesn't sound like a thing because also he revved it like crazy when he was here, so I'm not sure. Um, another thing we're worrying about is the replacement cap for the toilet <laughs> was delivered to a locker in Milton Keynes. We were planning to be there in time to get it, 
but it got delivered to the locker early and um, Amazon said we have to pick it up by Sunday. Yeah. Oh, that too, but just the joy of being back up, like cruising again. We have actually made it to Cosgrove. Woohoo! Yeah, Saturday, it is Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Friday was supposed to be a short, easy cruise to Cosgrove from Stoke Bruin, but we broke down in the <laughs> second lot. First, First lock. lock, yeah. And as we were going out, the engine just started to sort of splutter and die. Uh, and then every time I tried to restart it, it did the same thing. Um, and, like, obviously it was only meant to be a couple of hours cruising following the lock, which it was, actually. Yeah. <laughs> once, once we got going again. Yeah. Because, yeah, oh, we called our CR and an engineer came within, like, half an hour. About an hour, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it was an amazing. Hour, half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Enough. He was amazing because he, um, it, the engine was really hot and he hurt himself on it. Um, and he hated our engine. He was like, oh, no, not a Peugeot. Peugeot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but then he was so determined and he fixed it and he got yeah. us sorted. He was like, yeah, just, he was like, I just want you out of my area and off to London. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to deal with a Peugeot anymore. He was really good, though. Like, but, yeah, mate, yeah. I'm so, so grateful. I don't know your name, but thank you. <laughs> no, I think yeah, we had a really nice cruise then after that. Like once the sort of anxiety had oh, settled down a bit. Beautiful. The stretch between Stoke Bruin and Cosgrove is beautiful and yeah. golden time. <laughs> there was a couple of little mishaps. There was um, there was one really tight corner that had a wide beam on one side. Tight corner, wide beam on one side, overgrown tree on the other. The other bit that wasn't that I I think I I lost my I lost my temper a little bit it was when we got to the top of the lock in Cosgrove. Um, there's the higher oh. fleet, and they're sort of moored up on the lock landing. Which but one was and one wasn't. One was and one wasn't, but they were awfully close. You'd have struggled to get a 50-foot boat in there. Yeah, well, maybe it's a little bit us, because maybe... Because we were... I was thinking, that looks very short, that lock landing, and those boats were there. Maybe we should have stopped behind and gone up to check out what was going on. But yeah. it was hard to see. I thought, oh, maybe I'm not And there was nowhere thought, to stop, either. I thought, oh, there must be room for us on the other side. No, there was nowhere to stop, because there was a really tight little spot, which was just about wide enough for two boats... And that didn't feel like the right place to stop before the higher boats. But it boats. is where we ended up reversing to. Yeah, and then there was the higher boats. And then the wind was still quite strong, so that was blowing us across into the higher boats. So I thought, well... And there was two boats coming up the lock. So I thought, well, I'll just get out the way. And so I tried to reverse around these higher boats. You were doing a really good job. I was doing a all right job but it was really shallow on one side as well and then i uh, tried sort of banked us panicked a little bit and threw it into reverse rather than throwing it forwards and then we bopped. banked slightly further and bopped into a wall the boats that were coming up the lock also like said it's ridiculous that they're allowed to park there so i did feel a little vindicated but i think it was just as well like it was the end of a difficult day you know with, a re with some really nice stuff as well like it was just the I don't first. know if I actually filmed much of the beautiful section in between no, because my were. battery was very low yeah. and my phone was full 
it was stunning. It was just like rolling fields and some church towers. And, and golden sunshine and yeah, like reflections on the it water. Was really, it, it was gorgeous. It was almost a shame we didn't. Oh, and lots of Canada geese as we got into the Coast Grove. I thought, because I love Canada geese, and I was like, oh, are those geese? And I was like, no, no, I'm just hallucinating geese. And Stuart's like, no, those are real geese. Thank you so much for watching and for all your support so far. See you next week.